Horror games are designed to be creepy, and bosses in games are designed to be the hardest part. So, naturally, horror bosses have got to be pretty creepy. Hi folks, it's Falcon, and today on Game Ranks, 10 of the creepiest bosses in horror games. Starting off with number 10, it's The Hunter from Dead Space. When it comes to creepy, an easy place to start is something unkillable. It sort of takes the scare factor out of something when you could just blow it away. Like, And the necromorphs of Dead Space are creepy enough. But by Chapter 5, you've gotten pretty accustomed to dismembering them, taking off their arms, stomping on them. And, and in Chapter 5, that's when the game throws a curveball at you, a super necromorph called The Hunter. It'll always regenerate from damage, no matter how severe. And anytime it shows up, it's panic mode because all you can really do is just slow him down and try to get away. This thing becomes a recurring enemy for a while, popping up at the worst possible times until you finally find a way to take it out in Chapter 10, where it corners you in the executive shuttle hangar bay and you take it out using the ship's engines. This thing was creepy enough in the original Dead Space, but the remake actually had a little side quest that gave it a little backstory and actually makes it a little more unsettling. I don't know, knowing that this thing was a guy who transformed into a monster willingly, it's unsettling, and it's one of the many smart changes they made to the original game. At number 9 is Ludwig from Bloodborne. Kind of a stretch to call Bloodborne a horror game. Maybe cosmic horror? I, I don't know. All these games have some kind of horror element to them. And this one's probably the most horror out of all of them. And maybe not a perfect fit, but that's why we're going to leave, leave it up here in the higher numbers area of the list. There's plenty of grotesque abominations in Bloodborne. Most of them just gibbering monsters. What makes Ludwig so creepy in comparison is that he still seems to retain at least some of his senses. I mean, how you could still think after becoming this bizarre horseman meat monstrosity, I, I don't know. But he does talk, at least a little. For the first half of the fight, he's kind of a gibbering wild beast, but fight him enough and he suddenly seems to regain his senses for a few moments, enough to pick up his sword and fight you that way. It's still more of a thrilling fight than a scary one, but the moments where this thing seems to actually be halfway alive are disturbing. Unlike a lot of bosses, this guy isn't dead after finishing the fight. You can find his severed head in the arena still muttering like a madman and also making horse sounds. It's part ridiculous, part disturbing as hell, which is basically Bloodborne in a nutshell. At number eight is The Bear. Um, the Condemned games are mostly about beating up the homeless in abandoned buildings. Uh, don't worry, they started it, right? Anyway, The Bear's kind of a out of nowhere enemy, and uh, that makes him pretty terrifying, actually. Halfway through the second game, you go out of your Condemned Building comfort zone and head up to the Black Lake Lodge, abandoned, of course. But what you find there isn't the usual giggling hobo with the pipe. It starts off with what looks like a crime scene, a severed arm, before you go exploring and find more dead bodies. Seems like some unknown creatures attacking these guys, so you're expecting some kind of monster or mutated human or something, but instead you get jumped by an extremely aggressive bear, which doesn't sound that scary, but believe me, this bear is out for blood. The only way to survive is to run until you got the opportunity to kill it by luring it near some propane tanks and blowing it the hell up. This whole sequence just comes completely out of nowhere, has nothing to do with the rest of the game, but damn if it's not effective. The entire buildup to the bear is creepy as hell, and the actual encounter is one of, if not the most terrifying few minutes of the entire series. Actually brilliant because they set you up for something that sounds like a letdown, and it's not a letdown. And number seven is the unfinished child. 
With World of Horror finally coming out of early access, I thought now would be the time to give this game its due. This is a game that gets by on uh, vibes more than outright terror. The lo-fi visuals and storybook presentation don't necessarily allow for a ton of straight up scares, but the spookiness is there. And some of the monster designs, while primitive, can be pretty unsettling, even when they're basically just static images. There are a lot of bosses I could pick for this list, but the one that stuck with me the most is probably the unfinished child from the case of the nightmare news at the noisy nails. How World of Horror works is that you're on a quest to stop a cult from raising an old god, and along the way you take on cases of strange things going on around town, which always end up leading to some kind of Junjei Ito-esque adventure. This case, no different. In it, you're looking into a series of bizarre serial killings, where the victims have all had their finger and toenails removed. Depending on how you investigate the case, you'll either take on the killer or, if you look more closely, it's possible to discover the killer's motivation, the loss of a child. This being World of Horror, they do something completely bizarre to bring their child back. They created a being made entirely out of nails which attacks you at the end of the case. I don't know what needs to be said here beyond this. It's a child made of finger and toenails, and that is completely disgusting. This game has some creepy artwork, but this one takes the unpleasantness to the next level. Like, look at it. Yuck. And number six is The Janitor from Little Nightmares, another series that's hard to pick the creepiest, because pretty much everything in the first and second game is some level of creepy. Not terrifying, but one of those things that's basically child-friendly, but... <laughs> I don't I don't know exactly how truly child friendly it is outside of the fact that it's aesthetically not disgusting. I do think most of the freaks you take on in this series could qualify for this list, but personally the first guy in the game is who stands out for me here. Maybe it's just because he's the first guy you have to deal with, so the fright factor is the strongest. I I'm not sure, but he's bizarre. He's got this spindly, spider-like appearance to him with his arms. And he can get you even when you think you're safe. His head is... I mean, I don't know what's going on with his head. His face is like falling off, or he's got maybe some kind of weird metal plate over his head. I don't know. The first few areas of the game see you evading this guy, but the final fight with him occurs in the laundry room where his arms are reaching under a door held up by a flimsy cage. Uh, to finish him off, you got to evade his arms and break the cage so the door slams down on his arms, which severs them. And you don't always get to finish off your pursuers in Little Nightmares. And in this case, it's extremely satisfying. And number five is Adam the Clown from Dead Rising. Uh, clowns in games automatically suspicious, right? If a clown shows up in a video game, it's safe to assume they're going to cause you a problem. And you'd think in a mall that's filled with flesh-eating zombies, some random clown would not really be high on the list of worries. But think again, because this clown ain't just creepy as hell, he's also dangerous. For some reason, the zombie outbreak has transformed all the loonies who work in the mall into psychopathic killing machines. Uh, no, it's not the zombie virus making them crazy either. It's completely unrelated to the outbreak. Well, not completely unrelated. It's probably the outbreak that is allowing them to finally act this way. But they just go nuts and want to kill people. My granddaughter. <laughs> She was done in by those damn zombies. When I heard her scream, I just lost it. I mean, there's a charitable read in which the pressure of the zombie outbreak drove them to the breaking point, but also, I mean, these dudes are dressed as clowns. Unfortunately, when they want to kill somebody, it usually means you're the target, or any poor unfortunate victim who finds themselves in a cutscene with them. In this case, this guy's found tormenting people on the roller coaster, because this one is a good mall. Got a roller coaster here. This guy's high-pitched voice and unpleasant appearance are creepy enough, and then he decides, hey, I I'm gonna pull out two mini chainsaws. The the fight actually isn't too bad if you come in prepared, but the conclusion's probably the creepiest thing about the guy. When you defeat him, he falls on his own chainsaws and it sprays blood everywhere, and he's laughing hysterically while it happens, which I don't know how that happens. Most Dead Rising is kind of just goofy fun, but this, this is actually kind of freaky in a weird way. <laughs> Ha 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 
And number four is Laura from The Evil Within, a game that is like Silent Hill if it had the subtlety of an early Resident Evil game. Plenty of ugly monsters, but the combat system keeps most of the encounters from feeling too frightening. Laura is different. You encounter her a few times throughout the game, and every time it's a fight for your life. What makes her so creepy is how she can teleport out of any corpse on the ground, and just getting close to her means instant death. Up until the last fight, you cannot kill her. All you can do is ward her off. Most of her fights are ones of desperation where you're trying to survive more than actually win. And if you're anything like me, survival doesn't come often. I died so many times on this thing. It's brutal how easy it is to hit you with the instant kill. One thing I dread when I'm returning to this game is creepy and it's also really tough. And number three is Lisa Trevor, one of the all-time creepiest creatures in the Resident Evil series, is not actually in the original Resident Evil 1, but was rather a new addition for the remake. The remake pushed the horror angle of the original with tougher zombies and a spookier, more atmospheric mansion, but the most memorable addition is probably Lisa Trevor, the stalker who chases you throughout the first half of the game. Rather than a zombie or some kind of monster, Lisa's a more subtle monster that feels like something out of a different series. She's an elongated monster in a tattered dress, shackles, and she's wearing a mask of faces she collected from her victims. She's actually a kind of pitiable monster, but that doesn't make her less dangerous, and she's unpredictable to boot, appearing at the worst possible times throughout the game. Taking her out is more of a puzzle than a challenging boss fight, so, uh, yeah, but she is so creepy she deserves a place on this list. And number two is the memory of Alessa from Silent Hill. My first instinct, obviously, Pyramid Head. He's the iconic Silent Hill monster, but he's not so much creepy as he is intimidating and scary. Out of all the original Silent Hill games, I've always found three to be the straight-up scariest of the bunch, and the most disturbing boss fight of all of them occurs near the end of that game with the Otherworld version of Heather. You fight this thing in the Otherworld version of the carousel with bags of flesh and meat replacing the ceramic horses. Uh, the memory of Alessa herself is covered in blood with flesh peeling off her face. This comes out of nowhere, and it's more nightmarish than what you usually get in these games. The disorienting, dark environment, and the oppressive, uncomfortable music really all add up to make this fight pretty unpleasant. This being Silent Hill, the combat really isn't the strong suit of the series, uh, so it's not super difficult or anything, but this one's one that freaked me out. And finally, at number one is Marguerite Baker. I'm not sure if there's anything else in the Resident Evil series that can top this one in terms of pure creepiness in a boss. There's harder bosses, there's bigger, more intimidating bosses, there's much more milfy bosses, even though Marguerite is the only actual mother between her and the nine foot reason the thirstier of the bunch wanted to play Resident Evil Village, but there's just nothing as freaky and unpleasant as Marguerite Baker. Resident Evil 7 is probably the scariest mainline Resident Evil game, and it's got some pretty intense moments before this boss, but I think what really gets people here is how shocking this reveal is. Up till this point, you've been avoiding Marguerite Baker, uh, but she's still human, uh, mostly. Kind of nasty looking, but mostly human, right? So when you go into the greenhouse and suddenly this bloated monster with weird elongated arms and stuff pops out and grabs at you, but damn, dude. <laughs> Don't you worry, none! It's one of the most effective jump scares in the whole series. And now you're immediately dropped into a boss battle where this freaky bug human hybrid is hunting you in a dark, confusing area where she can attack you from anywhere. The first instinct is to try and run away, but you have to fight it. There's, there's no other option. It's one of those situations where people just turn off the game and walk away for a while. Uh, remember we did um, that video on nope moments? This was one of them for sure. Uh, and uh, that's, it goes double if you're playing the game in VR, because it's it's one of those ones that's too creepy for a lot of people to handle. <laughs> 
And that's all for today. Leave us a comment. Let us know what you think. If you like this video, click like. If you're not subscribed, now is a great time to do so. We upload brand new videos every day of the week. Best way to see them first is, of course, a subscription. So click subscribe. Don't forget to enable notifications. And as always, we thank you very much for watching this video. I'm Falcon. You can follow me on Twitter at Falcon the Hero. We'll see you next time right here on Game Ranks.